is a long-time contributor to GNOME and a member of the Ubuntu desktop team. Uh, it's James Henstridge, and he will talk about supercharging app upgrades with SnapD. Okay. So All right. Hi. So, yeah, I, I, put, I chose sort of a fairly vague title just to, to get people interested. So, <laughs> um, this is this is sort of this talk is going to be a bit about um, some changes we're looking at making to how we handle Snap packages on on. Uh, uh, upgrades of snap packages to improve the reliability of the applications uh, uh, as we're upgrading them. So, one of the, if you look at if we look at uh, our traditional package management systems, often you'd sort of go through and install all the operating system updates, and it'll just overwrite all of the executables, data files, and other other files related to an application when you perform an upgrade and Often this would be, maybe it's an unattended upgrade system or something else which would have no coordination with what the user is doing, which in general works most of the time, but occasionally you could run into some problems. So um, I, often, I, I remember a while back this would often cause problems with Firefox. Um, I don't see it very often now, but it would often... Um, uh, yeah, so there'll be, sorry, uh, there, there was various applications which sometimes uh, cause problems when you up upgraded all the data files underneath them, and it also has some new issues when we're moving towards uh, desktops with confined applications. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the cases is sometimes found is applications which decide that they're going to pack a whole lot of data files into an archive, and they might sort of on application startup, read in an index so they know what locations in the archive, all the data they expect to find, and then they might reopen this data file later on. And if you've rewritten the contents of this archive, suddenly um, things go wrong. So I think old versions of Firefox would sometimes lose the JavaScript, which would be running some of the UI or something. Uh, another case is if you've got a an application which makes use of plugins, uh, if they don't load all of the plugins on, on startup, you might get into a situation where you're running the application and you try to use a feature, it tries to load the plugin off disk, and suddenly you've got a plugin for the new version of the application, which hopefully is compatible, but maybe it's not going to be, so... Um, Maybe it's go maybe the feature will work, maybe it won't. Um, idea and so that's another issue which can happen. Uh, sometimes the new version of the application might not need certain data or might not need a library, so suddenly something the application needs is just gone. Uh, let's see. When we move on to sandbox security, um, often we want to sort of limit what the application can do, and often you you want to make sure that um, we want to sort of say that the application can only do uh, what what the security policies allow it to do. So also this means that if we if you uninstall an application, ideally it should be stopped, and it shouldn't be able to it shouldn't leave any processes lingering behind, and it shouldn't so like. It shouldn't be able to continue talking to the network. It shouldn't be able to do anything. So uh, this can also be an issue if we're upgrading the application and say that this changes the security policy, like um, say an application which had previously been granted access to your home directory and the new version, they've upgraded it to use XGG desktop portal. Uh, and it's suddenly the new version shouldn't need access to the home directory. It would be nice if we make sure that um, you, you fairly promptly move over to the new version, which has the reduced permission set, and uh, you don't really want the... Ideally, you don't want to sort of just... You can't just upgrade the security policy without, uh, without telling the application because the old version would be expecting to read all these files, which suddenly they'd be cut off... Uh, the access would be cut off un unexpectedly if you... Um, if you just uh, go go straight off. So, um, 
some of this uh, um, some of these problems are solved already via SnapD, in that uh, we make sure that when we download a new version of of the package, we don't actually we don't replace uh, the previous version. Instead, uh, the new version is unpacked uh, next to the old version, uh, so we can do all of the slow slow parts of the upgrade of the downloads and, and checking the package and everything until it's ready. And then there's just a, a very quick process of making the new version current, which it w is usually involves um, changing some symlinks, uh, installing the AppArmor policy, and maybe exporting the, updating the desktop files so that um, like Numshell will launch the new version and stuff like that. Uh, Let's see. Um, with SnapD, we currently uh, we don't just uh, uh, we don't just uh, uh, target desktop applications. So we've got some extra features if we are handling um, system daemons, for instance, where SnapD can already uh, make sure that the old versions of the code stops running when when we do this upgrade. So. It can talk to the system instance of system D and stop the, app, stop the old version of the application. We make the new version current, and then we can bring up the, we can bring up the new version and, and start, restart it. And similarly, if we're uninstalling the package, um, we, can, uh, we, can stop the, we can just stop the daemon and make sure there's no processes lingering, etc. Um, this at the moment, uh, this uh, this doesn't quite work as well for the desktop uh, applications because, of course, a root uh, a root process like SnapD can't talk to the user session uh, system D. So, um, and then there's also the case that um, not everything on the desktop is going to be a a, a system D. Uh, a daemon or process. So the other types of long-running processes, of course, is your applications like your web browsers or communication applications, and etc. And these are ones which uh, these are pro uh, these are these are also applications where uh, the policy which we've used for system system daemons don't really work because. Um, you don't generally want to just uh, kill things without informing the user, like you might be able to do for uh, for these uh, these system level services. Um, so we've been working on a, a new bit of code uh, which will give uh, SnapD some insight into what's going on on user on the user session. Uh, this is some code which will this is a, a new service which will which runs runs as the user and can can perform actions on behalf of SnapD. Um, this can do these uh, daemon restarts, and we can also um, prompt the user that they might want to they might want to restart their web browser or similar, just to to allow a, an update to, to complete. So, uh, the way we've been. The way we've been handling this is to again use uh, systemd socket activate, activated services. So uh, when when this new version of SnapD comes out, uh, when you when you start your session, there will be sort of a there will be a Unix domain socket created in XGG runtime directory, uh, where when whenever Whenever a SnapD tries to connect to this socket, it will start up the agent, uh, which can then perform the actions on behalf of um, on behalf of SnapD, and uh, it will allow um, it, it will. And then, when the agent is idle, it will then exit again, so that it will be available. It can be activated again by socket activation. And one of the one of the reasons we've done it this way is that. Um, we want to add minimal overhead to the session, uh, to individual user sessions, and also make it so that this uh, this session, this bit of session code, can be updated without having having to set, uh, restart the the user session. Um, as far as SnapD is concerned, this means that um, 
it can tell, it can enumerate all of the available uh, logged in users by just uh, doing a glob over run user and looking for this uh, socket file. So it can um, it can determine all um, all the uh, current all the current uh, the available uh, sessions like that. Um, so at the moment, um, and if uh, at the moment the plan is that we will uh, that if if a, a snap says it's providing a background uh, user session service, uh, such as maybe some Dbus things, if it's if the if the snap saying that it is, it will be safe to uh, safe to be restarted. The uh, the plan is to have the, allow this uh, session agent to just um, perform the restart as part of the uh, package upgrade, um, and uh, so this would be uh, pretty much re uh, reproducing the. Um, sorry, this would be re reproducing. Uh, uh, the policy we use for system level daemons. Um, yeah. uh, for the foreground applications, um, uh, we we can't really do that. We don't. We really want to be restarting things without um, without telling the user. So we are looking at using just uh, standard desktop uh, desktop notifications, uh, and rather than uh, rather than uh, making this something which is going to Block the user from con continuing. We can uh, complete most of the upgrade, and then uh, pop up the des desktop notification. Wait for the user until they finish what they're doing with this application, and when they exit out of the application, we can complete the upgrade, and uh, which is going to be quite fast. And when they launch the application again, uh, they they can be confident that. Um, it's running the new version. <coughs> so, uh, at the moment, uh, there's some of the issues with with the system we've got set up is that, of course, that since the session agent is running as the user, um, it's um, we can't uh, SnapD can't sort of implicitly trust it. There's nothing which would stop. You use as a, a malicious user from just replacing it with some other service which looks looks uh, implements the same uh, API but does something different. Um, however, for most of the um, most of the use cases we've got here, it's the things which uh, we want to ask this uh, this agent to do uh, will only affect uh, the user in question. So, if they try to subvert to this. Uh, uh, this agent, then no, it's only it's only going to affect them them anyway. Or alternatively, um, uh, the actions which we ask the session agent to do, we can verify that they've actually happened. So, like if we uh, if we asked the session agent to restart a daemon, then we can quite easily say yes, the process has actually disappeared. So yeah. Uh, one of the other issues, of course, we have got is that. Uh, we don't really want to allow a, a user to delay upgrades um, indefinitely. This is this could be particularly important if we've got um, uh, security-related issues with with a particular snap or something. So I know that um, some of the SnapD people they uh, we're probably going to have a system where if you try to delay the upgrades uh, for too long, um, eventually the new version of the package will be made current. Uh, even even if the application hasn't been ex hasn't been quit, but in that case we're in no no worse position than we currently are. So um, yeah, those are the uh, those are the those are the major main features of this um, upgrade system which we're looking at uh, doing. And I think it's going to um, I, I think it should give a better user experience for some of these uh, weird. Uh, these corner cases, corner cases of upgrading um, some of these complicated applications. So, uh, yeah, those are that, that's um, that's the um, that, that, that's what we are looking at um, at building now. Yeah, <laughs> sorry.
Hi, Alex. So, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. So, one of the things we've got asked for in Flatpak is support for apps to control their own updates, like show uh, there's a new version available in the UI of the app, and then like click, all right, I want to upgrade. Do you have anything like that? Um, so, at the moment, um, at the moment, we are still we're still partway through development of this uh, thing. We haven't actually implemented uh, anything quite like that at the moment. Um, at the moment, we've sort of been making it so this agent is only communicating with SnapD and we've got some some other services which talk to confined applications just, just to have sort of a process boundary um, to keep things separate. Um, I don't think there's any particular reason why we couldn't notify the application that it has an update um, available. I mean, I don't... I mean, it, it, Firefox does so on like Windows and or if you build it with its internal updating system, it will like show you there's a new update. Do you want to move to it? Right. So this wouldn't be, it's not so much the application controlling the update, but knowing that it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it I mean, can update. So, so we don't actually support this in Flatback yet, but we have plans or maybe looking at it I, like yeah just tell you that there is something new and I, I think Ken can answer something um so I I know th is this thing working uh you got to press the button yeah it's working okay um so I know there's been some requests from the snap d team and the snap d team has plans to do um something along those lines not directly um letting the application control it but letting the application know the state so if they know there's an update that, like firefox could know there's an update available via the snap channel um, but the flip side of that is we have customers that are asking for the ability to suppress um, updating the app like maybe there's a manufacturing scenario where the app that is running like a sewing machine has to it knows it needs to run for 60 consecutive minutes without being interrupted it needs to be able to tell snap d do not update me for this period of time um, and that is on the roadmap and will be done pretty soon so there'll be an api for applications to be able to talk to snap d to control some of this sort of thing in a limited fashion at some point it will be forced to upgrade um, just for security purposes. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if I don't know if the thing Ken's suggesting is, is that. I think that's. I mean, it's related. I was just related. interested in if we were to think yeah, about so this at all. And one and Alex, one thing that you would be interested in for Firefox is um, they they disable the internal check for a new update in the snap. So yeah, I think they will in the flatback too. But yeah, you know, they want to have something that replaces it basically. Yeah, so I, th I think we could definitely set up something like this. It's just, we haven't yet. Um, yeah. Uh, is there any other questions? Well, if there are no more questions, um, the next talk is at four o'clock in the downstairs main auditorium. There are no more talks in this room, but at four o'clock the lightning talks will start. Um, so thank you very much, James. Thanks.